Hello, my name is Ilkka Kakko. I come from Finland. Uh, they know me as well as Serendipitor. In Twitter, I'm the expert in Serendipity, co-working and competence platforms. So what is Serendipity? Serendipity is the quality of mind which through awareness, uh, sagacity and good fortune allows one to frequently find better things than originally looking for. That's the original definition by Horace Walpole from 1754. So that's quite a while ago. And why is Serendipity hot? Because you, in your talk yesterday at the uh, Seeds Meet Global Conference, you said that also at the, the South by Southwest Conference, Serendipity was a really hot item. So why is it so, so hot these times? I think because Serendipity is based on unexpected uh, odd or contradictory conditions, events, you know, encounters. And because of the social media, internet, you know, digitalization and so on and so forth, the predictability of our economy is very low at the moment and there will be more and more unexpected events, uh, results, encounters and so on. And people who understand serendipity, they can gain from these unexpected encounters and events. So how can you understand serendipity? What are the, the key factors of creating an environment where serendipity, where, where serendipity will will happen? Well, it's a, it's a good question because in many times in discussions nowadays people are concentrating saying that okay serendipity is a lucky accident, which is not. It's a small part of serendipity, it's just lucky accident. It's much more about gaining these kind of combinations of competencies, new, um, let's say, environments where, where it could be chance encounters can be supported, that's fine. That's called, in, in a way, it's called coincidency. So when you increase density and diversity, that's very important. But the main thing in serendipity anyway, is how to gain insights, how to be able to discover, how to be able to, to be act of noticing. So that's the point. And then, of course, by the definition of serendipity is also that how can you as an individual, as a team, as a community, gain from that set of insight so that you can create value. And you also got some concrete examples? Well, there are hundreds of them, hundreds of them. In science, there are lots of them, starting from Columbus and Archimedes and founding of penicillin and x-rays and Teflon and artificial rubber and so on and so forth. There is a good book of it. 1989 published Royston Roberts talk, you know, writing about all these. But since that, there has been more and more and more practical examples about that. And I, I don't go to any details, but I can say like Post-it Labs, Viagra, uh, SMS messaging, Bitcoin, Graphene. So these kind of examples, full of them. But it are really examples of where people, I think, uh, weren't really aware of serendipity? Yes, they don't call it. You know, some, some of them call them, you know, it was serendipitous accident or serendipitous encounter which led it to this. But, but many times people don't even realize that it's... And one point is also that in some discussions, and I was talking about this yesterday as well, I'm afraid that serendipity is becoming kind of buzzword. You know, everything is soon serendipitous, everything is fine. It's like Disney-like uh, positive world of, every, word of everything. So, so that's a bit uh, uh, not so encouraging. But uh, as a phenomenon, it's very, very fascinating. And if you understand it as an individual, as a team or as a company, then you can benefit from it. And we were also talking about uh, competence platforms. So what's the link with competence platforms and serendipity? I think that this new phenomenon called uh, competence platforms, I think what they do, they enable more and more serendipitous encounters to happen. But I hope, because this competence platform development is in infancy at the moment. So what I really hope that the development will go to that direction, that also these kind of, um, how would I say, to support insight, to support preparedness, 
this kind of elements will be also available or present in this kind of platform. And that's why I like talking about seeds to meet, that they are introducing this uh, seeds for silence principle or, or concept. Because in many cases what we have been studying, it's that the insight itself is happening not in the office, not in the co-working space, but somewhere else when you can relax, you can be in solitude, you can kind of in nature, that kind of places. So Seeds to Me it's, oh, it's, it's going to introduce this Seeds to si for Silence. I think that's a, that's a very good sign. And you also uh, see uh, existing organizations that are uh, uh, empowering Sermon Liberty uh, in the offline and online world uh, to, uh, for the benefit of their organization? Well, I would say that <clears throat> the traditional organizations, they haven't really got it yet. But I see much more, you know, vision for co-working communities, freelancer communities, independent agencies, all this kind of stuff. They understand it because uh, they are kind of more open-minded. Um, they are kind of not that uh, dependent on organizational structures and so on. So I think there is a lot of potential there. But also if the traditional companies will understand that they can join these communities by so-called extended enterprise uh, principle so that they can open up their borders, they can join these uh, good communities and gain from the talent, gain from the motivation, the dynamics which are provided by, by these kind of communities. And do you believe that, 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 that the real magic will happen when those two worlds come together? I think that's, that's probably the key, yes. Because alone, freelancer com uh, communities, co-working communities, they are kind of, uh, how would I say, a bit lost because where the big money is still, it's in the traditional companies. And traditional companies, they need more creativity, they need to open up more to serendipitous encounters and serendipity. So I think when they, these two mix, and I think uh, in this case, the seeds to meet connect, for instance, as a competence platform, could be a, a, a brilliant solution. I don't know, it's under development, it will take time, but uh, I'm looking forward to, for the launch. And uh, what about what you've seen uh, yesterday during the conference about the, the, the concept? Uh, what do you think are the, 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 the weak and the strong points of the concept as they have printed it uh, right now? Well, <coughs> To start with the weaknesses, I think there is some problems with the ontology of the competencies and knowledges. At the moment they have 42,000 some sort of knowledges or whatever. So that's absolutely too much. So they have to kind of categorize those competencies or knowledges somehow. The other thing is the language problem. Because uh, I discussed with Ronald and he said most, most of the discussions are in Dutch even though the system itself is in English. And if they like to, to provide international you know, audiences with some sort of interaction, then I suppose everything should be in English. And that's, that's one problem for them to solve. But the good thing is, like I said in my speech yesterday, that I see that um, Seeds to Meet has at the moment enough uh, uh, how would I say, this kind of uh, power to create a platform where they will have from the very be beginning thousands of people involved. Because there is this kind of valley of death. If you have a competence platform and you have 50 or 100 or 200 users, you never know if the platform is good or not because there is not enough uh, critical mass. Yeah, so they got the critical mass, but also the mindset of the, of the mass of sharing and also working together. I think it's a really good uh, advantage for them. Yeah, that's, that's good because in every community and in every platform, you have some people, have to have some people who show the example. And I think you have plenty, or seats to meet, have plenty of them already. So that's kind of core tribe of building the community around the certain topics. 
And we look at the serendipity and also the examples. There are quite some examples of, of serendipity that happens without any notice. So people were looking uh, 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 after it, it happened and then look back, okay, oh, cool, serendipity happened. So how, how can you make that the profession of, of serendipity isn't going to be a profession of only looking back about, oh, this happened, and also really is going to look forward? I think it's, it's, it's three things, you know. It's, it's the virtual uh, design of, of your working space, like competence platform. It's the physical uh, uh, look and design of your, your office space or whatever co-working space, some artifacts, some uh, facilitators there and it's always this kind of you know people have to have this kind of open mind curiosity and some sort of passion in their own way to to really take their cases forward so it's the dynamics the total dynamics of this ecosystem which is decisive